The distinction between null and missing data in computer vision is a very important distinction to make. In the case of missing data, it means that for a given image or a certain piece of data, there is no data around it yet. Um, in the case of annotating, maybe you haven't quite yet visited this image yet. In the case of null data, this means that it has been an active decision has been made that there is actually no data around this image and that means that it is, it is simply an active decision that there is no data to be had here. In the case of object detection, as you're drawing bounding boxes around things that you want to detect, null data might mean that you've passed through an image and you've simply decided that there is nothing for your model to detect in this image and you actively want to show this example to the model because this is um, going to happen a lot in production where there are images where you actually don't want any detections to be made. And so, because of the importance between these two things, null and missing, we have made a tool at RoboFlow that makes it easy for you to keep track of your data, which as you're annotating is null, or maybe it, you want to leave it simply as missing because you haven't had the opportunity to annotate it yet. And then more importantly, once you have these distinctions, you can go through and use them in your modeling process to choose which data you want to be showing to the model and which data you want to have um, marked as as missing, you know, that you have not annotated yet. So now we're going to go ahead and dive in hands on with this tool and I'll show you uh, how you can use it to make uh, your data sets even better. Okay, so now we're in RoboFlow. Let's say you've uploaded a data set and you're ready to get started annotating. And now you want to decide the difference between which of your images are an unannotated and which ones are just simply null. So in order to get started on annotation here, you can see your images here and you can go to view unannotated images or view all images. And then you'll be here on uh, the tab where you're on unannotated images here. And then you just jump into the labeling tool by uh, simply clicking on an image. So now we're in this image and let's say that we want to get started and we want to be detecting uh, all the chess pieces that are uh, white horses. So we might uh, draw a box around this and just call it a white horse and save and enter. So now. This image uh, already has an annotation on it, and you will um, see that this image will drop off from the unannotated uh, group area because it has actively has an annotation on it. But now what if we go to one of our images here where there actually are no white horses in this? So we can see here that you know this image has uh, absolutely no white horses, so there's nothing for us to annotate here. Um, but we also want to communicate that uh, this is the case that this image does not have the object that we want to detect. So here you would go here and you would go to mark as unannotated. This is a now a new little feature on our labeling toolbar here. You go and click mark as unannotated. It will pop up this uh, pop up for you just to make sure that you want to do that. And you can go ahead and mark as unannotated and then I'll let you know that, you know, now you actually uh, have a, a null uh, image that has been has been created here. And um, now going forward, let's say you've already started some annotations and you go ahead and uh, start an annotation there, but you've decided that actually, you know, this, this isn't a white horse, I want to move backwards. You can do this and uh, you can mark as null and it will actually wipe uh, all of the annotations off of, uh, off of the, the image that you're annotating. So now jumping back after we've made these changes, let's go ahead and see what our uh, data set looks like now that we've made these changes. So if you um, reload here, you can see unannotated, we have only uh, six images here. So now those unannotated images that we've either marked as null or we have labeled them have dropped off. And you can see in the training set here, we have uh, all the images and they actually kind of dark out a little bit once you, uh, once you provide the fact that there are um, annotations there. So this is useful as you're going through your labeling flow. You can kind of keep track of which things you visited, which are missing, which are unannotated. And then as you're going through and you're getting ready to generate a version, you can go here. And one other useful thing here is you can actually filter null. So you can choose to filter a portion of uh, your data set out as you're going through. And 
you can filter um, pieces of it. So um, you can choose, you know, I only want so many of the null examples because uh, I, I want my model to be um, able to see and detect things. Because sometimes if you have a very large training set of null images, uh, you'll see that the model actually doesn't take off at all because it just uh, simply doesn't have enough information to, to learn from. So that was a quick uh, introduction to the way that uh, unannotated images and null images flow through your labeling flow here at RoboFlow. Um, we hope you enjoyed and hope this helps you as you're uh, working through your, your labeling tasks and your dataset creation tasks. And um, thanks so much for watching today and we'll, we'll see you in the next video.